Hey guys, my name is Visionaire, and welcome to Production Secrets Revealed, episode uno. <laughs> well, uh, let's get started. Just a quick few things. Um, I know the name is Production Secrets Reveal, but they're not really secrets. You know, it just sounds cool to say Secrets Revealed. And just careful on just imitating someone else's method because you actually might be limiting your creativity just by doing something because someone else is doing it. If you really like it, then go for it, but just be careful not to limit your creativity. Today, I'm gonna reveal three secrets. Uh, one is how I do my bass kicks and bass line. The second one being how I do my violins. And three, just general mixing tips, what I do. Before I begin, I just ask you nicely if you could like this post. You know, I'm revealing three secrets. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's just going to motivate me to do more of these. So if you want to see more of these, please, please like it, because then I'll spend more time doing these. Thanks, guys. Let's get started. So I'll tell you how I went about making the kicks in my newest track, Serenade. For the main kick, I use bassism. Uh, it's a VST solely for making kick drums. Soloed out, it sounds like this. Now, since there is a uh, chord progression, I did have to automate the, the tones. This is the uh, VST I use. Uh, you could control how long it lasts for, you could control the tone, you could automate how uh, quickly it decays or how slowly it decays. You could control at what frequency it's, uh, the kick starts. Definitely a great VST for bass kicks. You guys should check it out. <laughs> so for the bass line, it, really nothing crazy. Very, very simple. Um, just follows this basic chord progression if you can if you can call it a chord progression yeah just the same old uh, just the basic sine wave as well to give it a a little bit of a drive to give it more of a oomph and I added this and that's for the bounce. It's kind of like the Melbourne feel. And I just wanted to put it in this progressive track because just to give it that oomph, just to give it that bounce. So yeah, that's how I made the kicks, that's how I made the bass lines for this track. It's always different, so there's no one set of way of going about anything. And I think that's what that's where the creativity comes in, into music production. Alright, so let's move on to the violins, the cello, the strings. Um, I get a lot of comments every song I make because I, I love using them because they're because they sound awesome. Yeah, so this is what it sounds like in my song Serenade. So I go through how I made the violins. Uh, it's really not that crazy, nothing crazy. I uh, I use Contact Five. What I love about the contact violins, you can actually control the slides by uh, by the velocities, like so. For uh, for a long glide, you just um, you barely press the uh, keys, and then it'll do a long glide. But then, if you do around five to fifty velocity, the slide is the glide is a little shorter. And if you use velocity 127, then it's immediate. Um. 
This is actually a cello, but um, I kind of played it an octave higher. It kind of sounds like a violin. I don't know. It sounds good, so it's all that matters, right? <laughs> now, um, when you do this, the volumes vary a lot because it's they're all sampled, and they're all sampled at very different volumes. So you have to automate the volume so that you can even it out. Because some of the glides are really loud, some of the notes were recorded really soft. So yeah, that this is how I do the you know the classical violin stuff. <laughs> if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Alright, let's move on to some mixing tips on how I go about making a track sound good, I guess. Now again, there's just so many ways to go about mixing. It's There's just so many tutorials. There, there's whole college courses on just mixing. At the end of the day, like you just have to practice a lot. If you keep on mixing, you'll just get better at it without you realizing. It'll just come gradually. And then if you compare your older mixes with your newer mixes, you'll hear the difference. But you know, in between, you'll just never know if you're getting better. Just keep practicing and just know that you're getting better and you just don't even know it. First mixing tip that I have, that I do, is you always want to EQ every single one of your tracks. One thing I use always is the, uh, the low cut. You want to always do this. Uh, in my opinion, you really don't want a lot in the bass area unless it's supposed to, like the bass kick, so that it can remain clean. Same thing goes with the uh, the high frequencies. There's just so much other things going on, like the violin that has high frequency, like the piano that has high frequency. So if you have something that's supposed to be mainly for the lower frequencies, just cut the highs because then it's just gonna get in the way. It's just gonna it's gonna sound mushy. It's gonna sound harsh on your ears. I think I have a pretty bad uh, habit of using a limiter especially the piano, the loudness will be all over the place. Uh, I guess you can use a compressor instead, but, but uh, for some reason I just have a pretty bad habit of using a limiter. I know the rule of thumb is you don't want to use a limiter unless you really need to. But uh, I don't know, I uh, just kept using a limiter and uh, kind of grew on me. Now the difference is if I don't have the limiter on, you'll see the volumes just all over the place. See how, see how there was a huge peak over there, but with the limiter on. The loudness will just have one point. So the loudest point will just be at one point and it makes it easier on you. It makes it easier on the ears to listen to the bells, I guess, to listen to instruments with varying loudnesses like the piano. I just want to talk about volumes for a quick second. When you listen to a song, you kind of focus on one instrument only and then the other supporting instruments, you kind of don't pay attention to it but it adds to the atmosphere. So even if it's soft, it does a lot. So uh, for example, I have this break. The main thing here are the bells. That's what your ears are listening to. And everything around it makes it sound good. That's pretty much all it does. Everything around it is the uh, support instruments. So they just don't have to be loud. Um, sometimes I hear mixes and the supporting instruments, the back instruments are so loud that it kind of takes away from what you're supposed to be hearing. Like for, I have pretty cool staccatos here. And even though I love the way it sounds, I just have to keep it at a uh, low volume just so the ears can focus on the bells. And you still hear the staccatos, but it's in the background 
but it still adds to the atmosphere. It, it doesn't have to be loud to add to the vibe. Again, very soft, but it does a tremendous bit to the whole song, to the vibe, to the atmosphere. So don't be putting everything at high volume just because it's a cool part. Uh, just know which part is the main part. And for this example, it's the bells. It's the bells that carries the main melody. And everything else is just kind of supporting it. Just know what your main instrument is. And if you have a hard time hearing the main instrument that your ear is supposed to be hearing, that the casual listener is supposed to be hearing, then you got to soften up the other parts. Thanks, guys, for watching the first episode. Um, please let me know in the comment section what else you want to know. Please ask me questions, and I'll answer the most asked question. Thanks, guys, for watching.